Have you seen a vegetable that seems like potatoes or sweet potatoes? Even if it might feel it's more like yams, it's something else which is cultivated entirely in a different way. How is all the processing done, and even how are the stems planted and taken care of? Believe us, the whole process is impressively exciting. But why? Well, there are no seeds involved, rather, stems are buried. And yes, interestingly, the vegetable doesn't appear on the plant, rather, in the ground. We are talking about cassava, a member of the tuber family plant to which potatoes and yams belong. Who the farmers used the amazing modern techniques to cultivate, harvest, and process cassava? Welcome back to another exciting episode of our channel. The Mechanicals brings you engineering marvels and little-known farming techniques that are revolutionizing the world in one way or the other. If you are new to the channel but enjoy learning about how technology and innovation are shaping the world's future, you will love to watch the videos we post on this channel. In this video, we will let you have a journey through the cassava fields and show you how it's cultivated, harvested, and processed. But if you don't know what cassava is, watch to find out. Let's get started. The first step is to plant the cassava stems into the finely made and developed fields. But wait for a second, why not are seeds sown and then taken care of for growth? Well, tuber family plants never grow from seeds, rather, they grow from smaller stems that are planted in the fields. Hence, the process begins by preparing smaller stems that are grown on another field. In reality, the stems are cut off from the standing cassava crop, with cassava growing into the roots. It should also be noted that cassava grows into the plant's roots, not on the plant or in the form of vines. When large stems from the cassava plants are cut off, they are tied together in bundles. Surprisingly, the stems are longer than the average stems of another plant, giving cassava its special characteristics. Usually, the cassava crop is called the longest straight-standing stem. In the next step, the bundles of cassava stems are cut into 15 to 25 centimeter sticks which will be planted in the next phase. Now, the cutting can be done either manually or using sharp blades and knives. One by one, the longer stems are taken and cut off into pieces or tens of bundles are put together in large trays with guiding lines to cut the stems into equal sizes. Chainsaw is used to cut the long smooth stems into smaller ones, making the process quite easier and lessening the labor. These smaller stems will now be used to plant in the fields. The next step is to prepare the fields for the crop. Before we continue further, tell us, are you loving the video? If yes, Please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel for more videos where we unveil breathtaking engineering and farming techniques. Let's continue now. Using automatic plows and heavy agricultural machines, the fields are made soft. It ensures that no clods and hard soil blocks are on the upper surface of the fields. Since the smaller stems need fertile and porous soil to grow optimally, the same conditions should be plugged into the fields. After plowing, another machine uses a set of round metal plates to roll over the fields to distribute the soil equally. It's customary for the farmers to use double plowing. First, plowing is done months before planting, while second, plowing is done just before the planting period. Farmers make sure that before the small stems are planted, they soak water with an added anti-pest solution. Therefore, the small stems are put into a water container and allowed to absorb enough water. One of the benefits of this process is to facilitate the stem to absorb water from the soil. Since the stem already has water, it reinforces the capillary action of the newly developing roots. Now, fields are equipped with a water dripping system before the stems are planted. Tubes containing minor holes are spread in lines beside which the stems would be planted. These tubes would drip the water into the soil throughout the growing period, and stems would absorb that water. Now, the planting period starts. Either it can be done manually, where farmers plant stems one by one or automatically, where machines collect the cassavas. It's easier, however, farmers have to do it with their hands and bow to plant the smaller stems every time. They just have to pierce it straight into the field, and that's it. However, automatic planting is rather interesting. 
A vehicle with machines at its back drives the fields, which plant the stems one by one. It has rollers in the center, which push the stem into the field, while the two bigger rotating metal wheels ensure that the beds are maintained. Once planting has been done, the dripping system starts its function. Drops of water keep falling on the soil, making it softer and more humid for the newly planted stems. From time to time, pesticides and fertilizers are given to the crop, which ensures maximum growth power. After a few weeks, these dry stems start to bear green leaves for the first time. More water is showered using automatic sprinklers. Gradually, the dry-looking fields convert into a lush garden. However, cassava cannot be seen yet. Even if it starts growing and reaching its full size, we won't be able to see it. The reason for that is cassava is underground, growing at its own speed. Calcium and magnesium fertilizers are also given to the crop while weeds are uprooted from the fields. This is where farmers can have a little fun. They use a scooter-like machine that runs on the clear side of the beds and cuts the weeds. After a few months, the cassava plants reach their full size, carrying bunches of leaves. It's the time when the root area of the cassava plant starts to rise due to the growing cassava underneath. Farmers see this as a sign and get ready for the harvest period. But how is harvesting done? Well, that's easier than you think. Simply, the farmers have to grasp the growing cassava plant and pull it out. When the plants are pulled out, a bunch of fresh cassava can be seen coming out of the ground in the tube roots. However, pulling the strong plants isn't that easy. Therefore, farmers use metal poles that act as a lever to pull the stems and roots out. But this can be done automatically as well, presenting a thrilling sight. The tractor runs around the beds, and the tractor has a machine at its back. That machine has a chain-like rotating structure where the cassava plant sticks in and are lifted off the ground. Since the rotating chains are in slope, the plants are thrown back where a trolley collects them. If automatic harvesting is done, more cassava can be harvested in less time, which can then be collected into containers. All the baskets and containers full of cassava are then emptied into the trucks that take them to industrial areas where further processing would be done. So massive is the crop that several trucks are stationed together and the lower hydraulic powered parking station raises. All the cassavas are spread on the floor from where they are further processed. Some of them are put in grinders that cut them into smaller parts which are dried in sunlight. They will be used as animal feed once they dry completely. The best quality cassavas are selected for food. But before they are sent, they are washed well since the entire crop has dirt on it due to its tube nature. Then, they are peeled and washed again to remove all the toxins. Some cassavas are fermented and converted into cassava flour. Then, the flour is packed into bags and shipped to all food industries. A little known fact is that cassava flour is used in almost all baked food items, tortillas, pancakes, porridges, pizzas, ice creams, sauces, and gluten-free pasta. The leftover cassavas are then shipped all around the country to be used in their raw form. Since they are a great source of fiber, millions of people around the world love to eat this tube plant family besides potatoes, yams, and sweet potatoes. Did you know cassava grows under the ground, not on the plant itself? What do you think? Can the bunch of cassava be uprooted off the ground manually? Or should powerful and heavy machines be used for that? Tell us, have you ever eaten cassava or bought its fine powder? Comment right below in the comment section, what fruit, vegetable, or crop harvest would you like to watch in our next video? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to get more videos on technological feats and farming advancements that are changing the world. Until the next video, stay tuned.